Control Freak project started out as just a bit of harmless fun, like a challenge to myself to make MIDI controllers without using fancy materials or expensive components. So over the past few months I've developed an ecosystem of electronics and techniques which make this possible. I even signed up to do a Control Freak workshop at the Maker Fair Barcelona this year. And so in this short video series I will be presenting and preparing the materials and components for that workshop. In this video I assemble one of the multiplexers that I use for many of the Control Freak projects. This component is the 74HC4067 multiplexer on a standard breakout board from Sparkfun. I mostly use this to connect to capacitive sensors, but it can also be used to connect analog or digital signals. It has 16 pins which connect to the individual sensors and 8 pins to connect to the breakout board. This 8 pin cable with male headers is the first step. I prefer this connection via cable instead of plugging the multiplexer in directly as it gives me more freedom when building my instruments. The 8 pin connector lines up with the multiplexer headers on the breakout board and takes care of the control, enable and sensor reading pins as well as the 3 volt and ground connections. Next I solder on the 16 cables which will connect the sensors. Now for making capacitive sensors with the Teensy board many different solutions are possible. One of my favorite materials is this copper sticky tape. It's easy to solder to and easy to apply. Another option is to use thumbtacks such as these. They are cheap and readily available and work just fine for this purpose. This 0.2mm brass sheet is also an excellent material. It's easy to cut to size, easy to solder to and you can even bend it to conform to the shape you need. Another useful and somewhat surprising option is to just use the cable itself with nothing more attached. This is an especially interesting solution when prototyping string instruments. The final option that I want to show you here are these paper clips. Also cheap and readily available, they are easy to solder to, quite strong and easy to attach, detach and recycle. They are not necessarily ideal for capacitive sensors which tend to gain sensitivity through larger surface area, but this can be solved by simply inserting a piece of copper tape like this. So this is the solution that I'm going with today. The assembly is quite simple. Just make sure that you solder the cable to the single sided end of each clip, leaving the active end free to clip onto stuff. Repeat 16 times and you're done. Finally, allow me to demonstrate why paper clips work so well for this. A typical control freak instrument is made mostly out of cardboard. The paper clips are able to fit through a minimal slit in the cardboard, whereas the thumbtacks, for example, need a larger hole to fit through. The brass sheet is also great, but not something that a lot of people have lying around the house. The copper tape is awesome, but is really too flimsy to pass through any size slit. The way I normally use this tape is by attaching it in its final position and then soldering the cable into place afterwards. And that's it! The multiplexer module is done. In the next couple of videos I will show you how I assemble some of the analog sensor modules, so stay tuned for that. And don't forget I will be at the Barcelona Maker Fair on the 6th of October, so come say hello. See you there.